This week we're fishing with Dan Benson. Now Dan and I haven't been able to fish in several years, but one thing I can guarantee you, he's still competitive. He used to be a tournament angler, and although he is the national sales manager for JL Marine, which all of you know is Powerpole, he still is one heck of an angler. What's special about this particular episode is this is the year we're launching the Power Pole Move. And no one's been more passionate about this project than Dan. Dan's always been a trolling motor guy, and he's excited to have someone like me try it out because I've always been the biggest skeptic of trolling motors when you're fishing for shallow water fish. After all these years of making my living with this stick, <laughs> Yes. You're going to show or prove to me today that life's going to get a lot easier. It is. John put a lot of time and effort into making this trolling motor silent, and I think he's accomplished that. I've heard nothing but good things. Nothing but good things. I've, I've actually been on a boat or two with the beta units on it, but it does not look this finished. This looks impressive. It really does look impressive. And I like how compact and small it is. As you can see, there's some power down here. There's plenty of power if you need it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's dump this baby in the water and let's see what it can do. Cool. Can't right. wait. Okay. So, the move is getting ready to be exposed to the general public. Where are you launching it at? In March, in we March. are going to make the announcement that the move is going to be ready. And then we're going to debut it at the Red Crest Bass Tournament and the Bassmaster Classic. So by the time this show airs, it'll be out. It'll be out. Yes. No secret at that point. It's no secret. I'll tell you what though, I am honored that you picked Flats Class to be one of the shows, especially on the saltwater side, to reveal it first because uh, it's been something that we've been looking at for the last couple of years and really the few times I have been on boats with Robert Shamblin, the president, or the founder John Oliverio with the beta units, they have been impressive. I've used them in Louisiana, I've used them in the Florida Keys. Now I'm going to use them right here in, in my backyard, and it, it, I'll be I'll be working you all day to see how fast one of those can be on the bow of the boat because I would love to be able to trade in that remote for that push pull on a lot of windy days. I think you're going to be extremely impressed with how quiet it is, actually how silent it is. You can't hear anything, especially in an extremely light skiff like, like this. this? But just how efficient it is, when you're using it all day long, you're not using much battery power. So we'll run it through its paces, ask me any questions you want. And we didn't bring it to market extremely fast, but when we do, we wanted it to be perfect. Um, and that's just the powerful way. All right. Well, we're going to put it down right over here on this point, and we're going to start working toward those white birds and see if we can get a few redfish or a couple of big trout. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I grew up in Pasco County, went to Land O'Lakes High School, so when we launched out of Nick's boat ramp in Newport Ritchie, I'm extremely familiar with the area. Being that it's January, February, we're going to have cold fronts, it's going to blow hard out of the north, and the water is going to be crystal clear. So it makes for challenging situations, but the key is to be quiet, methodical, and really dissect the area and find out where those fish are holding. So I see you have two remotes for the move. Why do we have two? Well, as redfish anglers, you know, in tournaments, you want both anglers to be able to control the trolling motor, but also control your shallow water anchors. Oh, so I don't need another fob. No. One fob does everything. It does. I'm going to pair it to your pump right now, and then we'll run the trolling motor and the anchors all day today. Oh, dude, that is, for lack of a better expression, that's badass <laughs> right there.
So you saw how easy it was to just deploy it, step on the pedal. And it it, it jumps water. up to your hand. Yeah. When you get good at it, you just step on it, kind of like a skateboard. It flips up and just set it in the water. And that's it. So easy. Um, I, I love the digital readout as well. I mean, that's easy to see. You know exactly what speed level is. is it one through 10, I'm assuming? It's actually on 24 volt, you're one through 17. On 36 volt, it's one through 20. Wow. Changing the game. Yeah, no doubt. So no matter which voltage you're at, 24 or 36, when you're on speed 12, so whether you're, 24 or 36, you're always on speed 12. So what you're telling me is one trolling motor can be used for 24 or 36? Absolutely. So if you need to stay super light, you go 24. If you need raw power, put a 36 volt battery in the boat and you've got all the power you'll ever need. Or with my power pucks, I could put this from this boat to a bay boat. Absolutely. No problem. With only one trolling motor instead of buying two. Yes. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> that is just brilliant. So this time of year when you're fishing on Florida's sports coast, which all of you know is Pasco County, there's a lot of different fish in play. You can catch snook, you can catch redfish, and if you work hard enough, you can find the trout in the creeks. And that's exactly what the plan was. I just didn't realize we were gonna have to go through almost everything in my tackle bag to accomplish the mission. There he is. Woo! Oh, oh. The nice trout. Oh, I got one. Got one? Here, I'm gonna put to, us in anchor mode. We may need to go to anchor mode. There we go. I had a large lady. I got I got the one with the spots on his body. Oh yeah, good trout. Good trout. Whoa, come on. Current's rolling. Yeah, the current is rolling. Little Pasco County trout. Yeah, no doubt. I was bouncing slowly along the bottom there, Dano. Slowly along the bottom. <laughs> Blows back on. 60 degree water, it's kind of chilly. Fishing in ultra clear water, you have to be really silent. When I started fishing Pasco County 15, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have to be as stealthy. The fish, I would say, weren't as educated. But today, you know, they get a lot of pressure on them. We saw a lot of other folks in our area. And when we use the new power pull move, it is completely silent and gives us that new edge to help us get closer to the fish. I'd have to admit the most impressive feature about this new trolling motor, the move, is the fact that it moves you through the water effortlessly and absolutely silently. I could not believe how quiet it was. There was no vibration, no harmonic imbalance, no squeaky noise in the steering system. It was absolutely the stealthiest trolling motor I'd ever seen. Welcome to the JL Marine Engineering Lab. I actually got permission to bring the cameras into the building, which is hard to do. We're gonna go get with Nick Vacari, the lead engineer on the trolling motor product, 
to show all the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into building the best trolling motor on the planet. Hey, Nick. Hey, what's going on, Dan? So I snagged a trolling motor and put it on CA's boat for Flats Class Show. We talked a whole bunch about it, and I wanted you to give us a little bit more of an in-depth look of some of the highlights of how you built the trolling motor. Absolutely. Maybe we should start with the steering here. We have custom gear profiles on our planetary gearbox that allow this mesh to be very, very smooth, and that smoothness equals um, a lack of sound or quietness when in operation. Also, we have chosen to use nine planet gears. That is a built-in redundancy. If you lose a tooth on one of these planet gears, there are nine other chances for this to continue to work. You can almost completely destroy this gearbox and it will still steer you. Another massive piece of building the power pull move is the propulsion motor. Um, go over the brushless motor for us. Our motor spins a little bit slower with a little bit higher torque. But we were able to make a propeller that has maybe a steeper pitch that allows us to take advantage of that and transfer all of the power from this motor to the water. So what I like is lower torque motor, lower RPMs, but coupled with a steeper pitch propeller. Yep. So we've got insane amount of thrust, yes. but the efficiency of the motor to fish all day long is yep. lights out. Yes, and the speed at which this prop is turning reduces the turbulence in the water, which reduces noise, which will allow you to get much closer to the fish. This titanium shaft at the same force that would shatter uh, fiberglass, you might bend this might titanium. Bend <laughs> might bend it. it. I mean, it would be an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch at most. And what's, what's cool about that is, that, you know, you bent your shaft, but you're still out there for the rest of the tournament, the, the rest of the week and the rest of the day fishing. It, it doesn't ruin your day. You have a slightly bent shaft, but you're still out there. The way I knew things would work out on this trip is because we were starting a little later in the morning with the big hoopla about the trolling motor and uh, it was really kind of delaying where I wanted to run and start fishing. So we did a little bit of fishing on the outside, but the tide wasn't right. I had to wait till the water got real full. Then we went back into some creeks and we caught uh, several small snook and a ton of ladyfish. I mean, more than I care to. Uh, but I really needed that tide to kind of fall out later in the day. And since we had a long, slow curve in the tide before it started to weep out, I just thought that we'd spend more time in those creeks. And as we eased out, we started seeing just aggregations of redfish that were piled up in these corners that were coming out of the creek mouths and working out on the flat. And as the light was going away, Dan was just firing away at the front of the boat. That's a good one. Power pole going down. Redfish. A rojo. There we go. Pulling some drag. There we go. Nice one. Tucked back in this pocket, way mm -hmm. back here. Back here where it's warm. And a good representative too. This part of the coast offers some of the best fishing in the state. It does. It's fun. I haven't come to Pasco County in a long time. There's just so many places to hide and get out of the wind. Look at that guy. And today, being able to move around on a trolling motor back in here is pretty nice. That's going to be a uh, barely in the slot fish, isn't it? I, yeah, he's very nice. Very nice red. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That is a good one. And caught, caught on a three inch minnows. Yes. Well, that's what's back here is all these mud minnows. You've been seeing a lot of finger mullet and mud minnows back here and very few pinfish. Plenty of ladyfish though. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of ladyfish back here. Right. But on a windy day like today, I mean, it has been so breezy to be able to get back in here and hide is nice. Yeah, that is, that is very representative. Fish like that, they're, they're, inundated all over this back country in here and to be able to move around on the move <laughs> I like that you like that move around on the move and be able to pick them off 
Absolutely. It's cool to just glide through here. You don't hear anything. Just sliding along till this, thump. <laughs> this cove's got redfish. That point will have snook. You know, there's trout in the main runs. It's, I mean, it, there, you can slam back here pretty easy. Well guys, the real star of this show, obviously, was the Move trolling motor, but we did utilize a variety of tackle. Now, we went through uh, just about every progression you could imagine in a day of fishing. We went from throwing top water, to throwing mirror deans, to throwing heavy deans, uh, jerk shads. The Minnow Z actually probably worked the best. Uh, even threw a little bit of Paul Brown, uh, but the rod setups that we used were, were basically, this is the seven foot Terramar PX, a really nice rod, uh, one of my favorites. It has a 3000 Stratic reel. I've got it loaded with 10 pound Super Slick V2 Power Pro in the blue. Uh, Dan also threw the Zodius rod. We had a lightweight Zodius seven foot spinner as well on board. And then on my end, I dominated uh, from the back and from the front really with the Terramar Double X. This is this seven foot medium action rod has really turned into one of my favorites for sure. And I paired that up with the Tranks 150. Uh, the Tranks is loaded with 30 pound Power Pro V2. And this is a nice little setup, especially for throwing jigs, spoons, mirrodines, even Ned rigs. Great to have Dan Benson on board and learn more about how I'm gonna be able to leverage the new Move trolling motor in a way that I never thought I would. Remember, I'm the original push-pull guy and now I'm thinking about, eh, I might have to have this move in a lot more scenarios than I thought. The tide is beginning to ebb out now. So with it starting to fall out, you're starting to notice the mullet and everything is coming out of all this, this grass that it's staged up right here in front of the mangroves. So we're starting to push fish out here. So we should have a good two hour window here on the turn of the tide. We're making a few adjustments with, with different baits. We might be able to pop a couple more of these guys. There's a redfish, 12 o'clock, 30 feet. 30 feet, less than 30, less than 30, easy. Oh yeah, right in it, come on, come on. Oh, All got him. It. I was gonna say, he had it, dude. Sweet. He's doing more than following it. I'm gonna put the power pole down. All right. Power pole's going down, bud. Red or snook? Red. Red? I could see him pushing up on it. Yeah. He, he must have had it then. He thumped it once and then had to come back There's and get a it bunch again. bunch of them out here I'm trying to get to. It's awesome to see them in this super clean water. And they're so hard to fool. They are smart. They are so hard to All fool. All right. Thank you for picking out this color for me, CA. <laughs> well, that's, that's a kind of a neutral color with no flash in it at all, hardly. Wow. So it's one of those colors that when it gets hard like this, it's a great color. So That's what we catch needed. A redfish. You know, the trout and the snook are one thing, but the reds have been tough. And I'm still trying to send it down here because I see a bunch of them moving around off this point. I'll tell you what, if you're going to be on a boat with someone for eight or nine hours, it better be Dan Benson because he's fishing just as hard on the first cast as he is the last cast. I mean, he goes at it all day long. Uh, I really almost feel like if I didn't have someone with his ability and his enthusiasm, this might have been one of those trips that would have got washed out. Right there. Oh boy, right on it. 
Come on. Give it to me. Oh, oh. He's on it. Got him. <laughs> I called that one. Got him. Maybe a nice trout ski. What a beautiful fish. Pulled out the big. Oh, man, I got slammed. The big Mirrodin. Tell you what, that could be the one I think, Dan, that sends us back. I'll take it. Let me put the trolling motor on anchor mode for you. I think mine's already rigged. Oh yeah. I got it. Look at that, Dean. It's a great way to end. I mean, it's it's been blowing all day long and the move, well, it made it was a difference maker today. It really was. It would have been tough to pull all day today and catch the number of fish that we caught. And some good quality ones at that. I agree. It was fun. Glad I got to show you what's coming. Uh, Let that one go and then we'll we'll make our way. I'm glad I'm glad that you put the move on the boat today. Hopefully here in another couple of weeks I'll have one on this boat forever. <laughs> It's gonna happen. After all the time we've taken to build it and make it right, we're ready. Tell you what, I was impressed. I was really impressed with how close we got to fish and how many fish we caught.